about Newton's first law of motion. And that stated that an object at rest is going to stay at rest, and an object in motion is going to stay in motion, unless it is acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. So in other words, objects are going to keep doing what they're doing, right? And inertia is that resistance to an object's change in its state of motion. So how much resistance is there to change its state of motion? Whether that be to, to get it to move or to get it to rest. Uh, now we're going to look at Newton's second law of motion, which really relates to force and acceleration. It states that the force on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. And acceleration is how really fast something's speeding up um, or slowing down. So if something's slowing down, it is accelerating. It's a deceleration, but it's still considered a form of acceleration. Um, so it's a change in its speed. Acceleration, change in the speed. So acceleration is the rate that an object changes its velocity. So something accelerates very fast, like a car that goes from zero to 200 miles an hour in less than 10 seconds or something. That's fast acceleration, speeding up very fast. It's changing its velocity very fast. So a lot of times cars will be uh, studied by how their acceleration rate. So they go from zero to 60 in 10 seconds, or zero to 60 in five seconds. That is indicating acceleration because it's a change in velocity. Newton's second law of motion states that a force, remember force is a push or a pull, measured in Newtons. Force is equal to the mass of an object, which is m, times its acceleration. So, the greater the mass, the more force they're going to need. The less mass, the less force you're going to need. If you apply more force, you're going to have higher acceleration. Less force, less acceleration. So, this is Newton's second law of motion, also called the law of acceleration. Acceleration is the rate in which an object changes its velocity. The velocity relates to speed and direction, where speed is just the rate of distance over time, without the direction. Okay, so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And that we indicate with the lowercase a. So if we rearrange this formula to figure out what a would equal, right, we'll get a by itself, we divide both sides by m, right? So then we're left with a equals force divided by the mass. So as you increase the force, you increase the acceleration. As you increase the mass, these are inverse related. There's an inverse relationship here. As you increase the mass, you're decreasing acceleration. If I increase the mass, remember, this is in the denominator, so if you increase the number in the denominator, the overall number is smaller. So there'd be less acceleration. If you decrease the mass, in other words, the denominator number is going to be smaller, so the overall number is going to be larger. If you decrease the mass, 
you increase acceleration. Acceleration is F force divided by mass. And we can also write acceleration as the change in velocity over time. Know that it also equals the force divided by the mass. But we also know that it is the change, it's the rate of the change in velocity. So we're going to indicate change in velocity over time. So if the car speeds up, it's accelerating. The car slows down, it's accelerating. It's decelerating, but it is still, it's changing its velocity. All right, so to indicate a change in, we use a symbol, Greek symbol, delta, looks like a triangle. So this means a change in velocity over t for time. So then we can say acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. So we have really two formulas for acceleration. Change in velocity then is going to be the final VF, which is final velocity. In other words, that's the end velocity minus vi, which is the initial velocity. So it's, that's the velocity you start with. Is equal to force divided by mass, but it's also equal to the change in velocity over time. And the change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. 